Hello, girls and boys. Today we will be using this universal multifunction tester to test the components on the Econ 3 Soviet Electronic Lab kit that I've shown you before. We will be testing whether the capacitors hold their charge, whether the resistors have their same value, and whether the transistors are any good. So stick with me on this episode and we will take a close look. Let us take a second look at this beauty. I've connected three cables to the multi-function tester TC1 with the color display. The yellow cable is the input one, the orange one input two, and the red one is input three. The tester turns itself off around after one minute, and each time a measurement is to be performed, I need to push the start button. When I push the start button in the idle state, meaning no cable is connected to any component, I'm getting a capacitance of around 12 picofarad between the cable 1 and 2. And that's because I have a small capacitance between them. Let me just start by testing some of the resistors, not all of them. And this particular one, nominal value 62 ohms, comes down to 60.9 ohm, pretty close. Let me choose the next one. 1.5 kilo ohm, which shows 1482 ohm on the meter. I think I'm going to test the rest of the resistors with a multimeter. It's just because it's more convenient and I don't have to push the button constantly. So that's why I'm moving on to the transistors. The first one I'm going to test is the only one PNP. The collector emitter current registers as 7.1 microamp and the DC current gain is only 41, which is not the greatest value. This of course depends on the material of the transistor, the type of the transistor, so I dug up the specs of this uh, Soviet transistor, MP25B, and I found out it is a germanium transistor, which usually have lower specs than the silicon transistors, and its typical DC gain is usually anywhere between 20 to 50. So I guess it's not too bad. The next one is an NPN MP35, another germanium transistor, and their gain varies from 13 to 125. It's probably been rejected in the factory for any other applications, and they used it in the electronic kit for kids as a toy. Oh, this one is even worse, with a gain of only 17. And the last one has a gain of 22. However, the collector emitter currents are better than that of the PNP. Let's move on to the electrolytic capacitors. The one with the highest capacitance on this board, 100 microfarad, 
This capacitor is rated at 12 volts and was produced in 1986. On my meter, however, it registers as 130 microfarad with the equivalent series resistance, ESR, of around 3 ohms, which is on the higher side. The ESR is particularly important when building power supplies with capacitors of high ESR value. This may result in capacitors overheating and failing while working in a circuit. That gives me an indication that perhaps some of the electrolytic capacitors are simply drying out with time, which is not a strange thing. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This one has a nominal capacitance of 50 microfarad and it registers as 58, with ESR also around 3 ohms. The 10 microfarad capacitor, however, does not register at all on my meter. It's either that the leads are not correctly connected, which would be very strange, or there is an issue with the capacitor itself. Uh, let me try once more by changing some of the connections. And same thing, it is just not gonna work. I have to remember, however, to replace it. And how about the 5 microfarad capacitor? From 1988, this one registered as 5.5 microfarad, which is not bad, but the ESR value is over the roof. It is whooping 48 ohms. I definitely need to replace this one as well. I also forgot to mention that I was looking for the tolerance values, but there is none to be seen on these Soviet electrolytic capacitors. Now is the time to test the 1 microfarad capacitor and I'm getting here 1.3 microfarad with an ESR value of around 14 ohm. Hmm, what should I do with this one? First capacitor with a marked tolerance, 100 nanofarad. And I'm getting 126. The nominal tolerance value is 10%, mm, so I guess this one is aging as well. In a different uh, mechanism than the previous ones, because this one is not electrolytic. Oh, 15 nanofarad registers as 100 nanofarad. Twice its nominal value, so I guess this one will get replaced as well. And another one, 50 nanofarad. Shows up as 91 on my meter. Alright, we are nearly done with the capacitors. Let's see what value we get for 10 nanofarad capacitor. The next four capacitors, I think, are going to be a lot more reliable than the previous ones. So rather than 10 nanofarad, I'm getting 12. And for 4.7, I'm getting 5.4. 
Guess what? For one nanofarad, I'm getting exactly 1000 picofarad. That by itself is amazing. I'm definitely not gonna replace this one. And for the last one, 100 pico. I'm getting 112 picofarad. Now I suppose I'm gonna move on to the diodes. The one towards the top is broken, but the one lower below should be okay. So let's see. And this is supposed to be a Soviet germanium D9 series diode. Provided, of course, it hasn't been replaced in the meantime. The physically broken diode does not register at all on the multimeter, understandably. Now let me move on to the variable capacitor. I'm able to spin its knob without any stopping. But my plan is to measure the capacitance in one position, turn the knob and measure the capacitance again. And then I'm gonna assume that it's gonna work if the two values are rather different. In this position I'm getting 180. Whereas in this one, 57 picofarad. I'd say they are rather different values, which is exactly what I expected. Enough of testing the variable capacitor, let me move on to the pot. If I do connect all three leads, I should be able to detect two resistors. And here they are. And it seems that we are at the end of a travel in one direction, only because the resistors are connected at the lead number 3. So if I do turn the knob in one direction a little bit, I also will be getting two resistors, however they'll appear that they're connected in point number 2. And if I do move the knob into the other end of its travel, I'll be getting the connection at point number one. So this part is checking out. And how do I test the switch? I should be getting a close to zero ohm value. One point two arm is close enough. Is this old LED still working? There is at least one way to figure this out. Uh, oops, let me rearrange the cables a little bit. Much better now. The forward voltage 2.6 volt. Which is kind of on the higher side a little bit. Photoresistor, here we come. These cadmium selenide photoresistors usually have low resistance when illuminated and a lot higher in the dark. Here I'm shining a lamp to record this video from above, so I suspect its resistance is not going to be terribly high right now. But instead I'm getting no connection right now. Well, let me cover up the sensor with my finger. And now I'm getting a capacitor with a very high value, 
around 100 microfarad with extremely bad ESR. I guess that's even worse than having no connection at all. So I'm gonna check it out with a regular multimeter in just a few. And how about the key? This one shows no connection right at this moment, which is fine. No shorts. And just above one ohm when it's shorted. But how do I test the speaker? Well, let's just connect it anyway and see what comes out. Oh wow, that was an interesting experience. The voltage spikes that the multimeter produces while testing. I have to try it out again. Oh, alright, so the speaker unsurprisingly shows up as an inductor with a 30 microhenry inductance. Now comes the time for the transformers. For the transformer on the left, one of the windings show 3.4 Henry. And amazingly, between the contact 39 and 41, I'm getting a resistance of 71 ohm. Let me try again. Uh, same thing. Interesting experience, when I connect all three leads, 39, 40 and 41, I am getting two resistors, both connected to the red lead. But that is not enough to stop us from testing the other transformer. Between the points, 44 and 45, I'm getting no connection whatsoever. And between 45 and 46, same thing, no connection. But how about between 44 and 46? And finally, I'm getting an inductor of around 400 millihenry. I do conclude that there is something wrong with the uh, connection to the point number 45, I think. On the other end, I'm getting an inductance of around 41 millihenry, and this transformer is definitely a different type than the first one. Here comes the ferrite antenna. I bet it's gonna test as an inductor as well. And yes, it is 5 millihenry. And the shorter winding registers as 50 microhenry. Time for a relay which, according to this drawing, should normally be open.
So this is exactly what I'm getting on the multimeter right now. The winding on the relay also checks out as a resistor with a resistance of just below 200 ohm. Here comes a moment to build a very simple circuit in order to test if the relay even works. I'll be putting the key in series with a resistor and this way I'm gonna test if the relay switches. What do you think? What resistor should I choose to connect in series with the relay? And from my experience, I know it is not an extremely sensitive component, unlike the semiconductors. So let's choose 200 ohm. And the moment of truth. When I push the key, there are some very gentle sounds to be heard coming out of the relay, which might actually be a good sign. I am getting just above 1 ohm on the relay, which is great. That's exactly what I expected. This one component is definitely doing its job. Remember the issue with the 10 microfarad capacitor that did not register on the multimeter? Let me turn around the board just to see if the connections to the capacitor are actually there. Prior to this, I had removed the protective cardboard, and these are the corresponding leads to the capacitor. At first glance, they look just fine. I cannot see any issues with the leads. And here is the transformer that gave me problems with the metal tap on the winding. Flipping the board again to finally figure out what's wrong with the photoresistor. When I short the leads, I am getting zero ohm. That part checks out. And hooking up the leads to the photoresistor when illuminated gives me around 0.1 mega ohm. Wow, that is a very high resistance for an illuminated photoresistor. Covering up the sensor with my finger throws the multimeter out of scale, so the photoresistor is still working. And testing the overall resistance on the pot, This comes down to almost 12 kilo ohm. All right. The most boring part is testing all these resistors individually.
and they all check out pretty much fine, in spite of their advanced age. I'm also going to check the problematic middle tab on this one transformer with the ohm meter. So it basically looks like it's not connected to anything. I of course preserved the sketch of Lucky Loop, who wants to say please like and subscribe to this channel for more videos of that sort to come out. So, what do you think about the components we've just tested? Please leave some comments under this video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you everyone and see you later. Bye!